This week's parasha is called Teruma, Contribution. And it begins with God telling Moses, Speak to the people of Israel that they bring me an offering. From every man that gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. Everything the people brought to Moses was from what they had already received from the Egyptians. We might say that the gifts from the Egyptians were like wedding presents, for the process of the marriage between God and his people Israel had begun. We might also say that we certainly earned it for all the hard work that we had done throughout our many years of slavery. But now the Creator was showing us that we were no longer slaves, we were free to give. It isn't always easy for us to give away things that we worked so hard for. But what did we do when Moses told us to take an offering to him with a willing heart? Later we read that we brought so much that Moses had to tell us to stop. Perhaps it was because we were still on a spiritual or a honeymoon high from our experience with God on Mount Sinai. We, my people, learn to become big givers from those days. It has been instilled in us from our very beginnings. Teruma teaches us that there is great joy in giving. We would all have the honor of taking our part in building the building of the Mishkan, where we would go to meet with our God. The finest of materials were used from the most expensive, like gold, to the least, like bronze. The gifts we brought from Egypt were used to build the house where God would dwell among us. The emphasis here is on bitocham. He said in Exodus 25, 8, and let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. He still dwells among us today. As I read about all that went into the building in the Mishkan, I thought, wow, Moses was learning to become an architect, an engineer. He was shown the design on Mount Sinai, but would now have to take what he had seen and have it formed into something tangible. Although it goes into quite a bit of detail, much was left up to our own imagination. With their God-given gifts, Men like Aholiav and Abetzalel and Betzalel would use their instinctive skill, together with guidance from Moses, to complete quite an elaborate place of worship on the inside, while the outside was very plain, not so attractive. God gives us room to use our creativity in our service to Him. You and I make up the Mishkan today. We don't always look so attractive on the outside, but when our light shines from within, it can be seen from the outside. Rabbi Yeshua told us not to hide our light, but to let it be seen on the hill. How do we do that? It all begins with trust. Giving from the heart is a trust issue and is the greatest state of being that we can ever attain. We read in Exodus 16 about those who didn't trust God to provide manna for them as he said he would. So they disobeyed Moses and they went out to look for it. God wasn't pleased with their behavior, especially after they had witnessed everything that he had already done for us. We all know that trust can only develop after many years of being in a relationship with someone and watching their behavior. If they continue to keep their word, we slowly learn that we can trust them. Once that trust is broken, however, it's almost impossible to get back. The Borei Olam has shown us over and over and over that we can trust him. Do you believe that God has opened your eyes? That's the Hebrew way of saying being saved. It means he opened the blind eyes so that we could discern between his truth and lies. He said, I offer you today both life and death, and I ask you to choose life. He gave us free will to choose, to make decisions, to be responsible, to hope, to admit what we do, to be humble enough to seek advice, to follow, to lead, to say yes to life and not give in to fear, and to build the community where he would dwell among us. We read about the construction of the ark, 
which would carry within it the Ten Commandments. There was gold everywhere, inside and out, to show us their immense value and importance. They were guarded by two golden keruvim with huge wings, a beautiful picture of God's shelter and protection. In verse 22, it says, And there I will meet with you, and I will talk with you from above the cover, from between the two keruvim, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all the things which I give you in commandment to the people of Israel. What a mystical experience. I remember finding a poem written by my father many years after he had passed away. It was such a precious moment for me as I held it in my hands and read it. It felt as if I was holding something for him that was almost sacred. Imagine holding in our hands and reading the letters written by Moses. That's what we do every week when we read the Ten Commandments. These tablets were placed within the ark to be carried wherever we went. And we still have them 4,000 years later. Do you think they've stood the test of time? So how do we apply this parasha to our lives today? Over the years, I have learned that the more I give, the more I receive. The more I give, it seems the more I want to give. And it's not only monetary giving, the first fruits of my labor, but also my time. Time is often harder to give, but I've noticed over the years that when you want something done, give it to the busiest person, the one who, especially the one who loves what they're doing. God loves a cheerful giver. When I put him first, he always protects me. He frees me, he heals me, he comforts me. Whatever I'm going through, whatever I need, I lack for no good thing. One of my favorite sayings of Rabbi Yeshua comes from Matthew 16, verse, verses 19 and following. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and worm would destroy them, and thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor wormwood destroys them, and thieves cannot break in and steal. For wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart is. No one can be the slaves of two masters. You will either hate the one and love the second, or be attached to the first and despise the second. You cannot be the slave to both God and money. You read the rest. They're well worth reading. Those verses sustained me as I was rebuilding my life, which had been devastated through my many years in the wrong direction. But the God of beginning again rebuilds our lives. He restores the years that the locusts have eaten, and I am living proof of that. Before I end, I just wanted to say something about the Haftorah portion this week from 1 Samuel, because we are preparing for Purim next week. In this community where our values are in stark contrast with those taught in the world today, we are to take care of each other, and especially the weakest among us. Darwin's theory, the survival of the fittest, is one of the lies propagated by the world and is the spirit that is so active in it today. The Torah teaches us to prepare ourselves to be like soldiers, strong, courageous, so that we can protect the weakest among us. There was a great verse that's called, that, that says in Psalms, Blessed be the Lord our God, who trains our hands for war. We've been at war since we left Egypt. After the battle with Pharaoh won by our God, we were attacked by the Amalekites, a cursed race, because they went after the weakest. They lay in ambush and attacked Israel from the rear, where our women, children, elderly, and our infirm were. Because King Saul didn't obey God when he was told to destroy all the remnants of Amalek, including the animals, we would have to experience the horrors of Haman 50 years later, 500 years later. King Saul also chose to destroy the weakest and to save the strongest and the best in the, in the guise of using them as offerings for God. 
This is where we hear that God prefers our obedience to our sacrifice. Don't be like King Saul who says, the Lord your God. He is the Lord our God. I don't believe that we need a large elaborate synagogue. What we need is a body of believers who trusts in their creator and obeys him. We shine from within as he slowly changes us from inside out, like the Mishkan in the desert. He protects us under the covering of his wings, as depicted by the Keruvim. We are a remnant of warriors. We have been gifted with treasures which we can share to build our community. The more we give, the more he blesses us, both individually and as a community. The name of God, one of the names is Echad. God is unity. He unifies, unlike the world where all its systems divide to conquer. God wants us to be in unity, in community. That doesn't mean we need to be uniform. We are free to serve him in whatever gifts, with whatever gifts he has given us. Shabbat Shalom.